Hey there, YouTuber. So, been messing around with some OC settings with the i5 13600KF. Now, I had originally started with uh, Tom's hardware settings. And so, we've been messing around with a couple different things. Seeing, um, starting with XTU, just trying to see what the highest benchmark I could get. Now, this video will feature those best scores as we do Cinebench R20 and then uh, Cinebench R23. So you can tell uh, left column, and I don't have headers up here, but uh, this is how much it was undervolted. This was the score, that was the temp, and this is the multiplier of the uh, efficiency cores. Okay, so I, you know, was trying some different things. Um, negative 20 millivolts, we got uh, 85.99, which for the longest time seemed like that was going to be the best score. Now I tried uh, the same settings basically, but a 30 millivolt undervolt score got significantly worse. Uh, then I said, hey, let's uh, boost up the uh, efficiency cores to 40x. We almost got the score back to where it was over here. Uh, then I come in and I try changing uh, vCore. And that didn't really do anything. Uh, added a little more undervolt just for the heck of it. I was surprised the temperature didn't come down. The score went down. Uh, just to make sure an even more significant undervolt with those same settings. Score started to come back up. And the temperature got down lower. Then I reduced the undervolt. Score dropped off again. You know, of course, unless you run this like five times, you don't know specifically that... Uh, you're going uh, necessarily up or down. Um, so I was trying to do, in some places, going up 10 at a time. Now then dropped it down to 90 millivolts. The score dropped off. Temp stayed good. Dropped down to 70 millivolts. Or excuse me, dropped down to 90 millivolts. And then I changed the efficiency cores to 41X, which uh, ended up with a worse score. So I said, oh, let me drop down to 70. The score went up. Then I dropped down to 60 millivolts, and bang, we hit our highest score, um, which is the one we're going to run in um, Cinebench R20 and R23 today. Dropped down to 55 millivolts just to see. Score dropped a little bit. Temp went up a bit. Dropped down to 50. Now the score is dropping. And so then I said, well, let me adjust the core voltage a little. We went back to 60 millivolts, increased it, score went down, um, decreased it, score went down from this one, right? So this is what we're talking about. These settings, um, everything was pretty much the same, except this is the, the one I was adjusting. Now... Went back to these settings, and I said, hey, let's change core 1 and 2 to 5.7 gigahertz. And lo and behold, I had my uh, highest score yet. And I don't know why I highlighted this one, folks. This is supposed to be uh, there. Oh, it doesn't stick out. Um and it wasn't supposed to be bolded either. But, uh, yeah, we're correcting on the fly here. All right. So, ideally, you know, we would run this one. This was the best overall. But uh, we're going to do, we'll use this one in the video. Now, I said, you know what? Why aren't we doing 5.7 gigahertz? If you had a really good CPU cooler and, and one of the better... CPUs, you should probably be able to hit 5.7 with no problem. Um, and now, I got to say, I, I probably need to go back and do some more work here. But uh, 
depending on the settings, you know, unstable. Um, this guy here was actually stable, which gives me a little bit of hope. So, now I say 5.7. This is all of the uh, performance cores, okay? Yeah. And this is the efficiency core row. So, having it at 40 was unstable. I couldn't, I couldn't dial anything in that I can remember that worked. 85 millivolt undervolt, um, 39x here. Gave a pretty decent score, low temp, and it was stable. But then we came back and we tried adjusting the V core as well as um, went back to the 40x for the efficiency core, kind of like this. Proved to be unstable. Um, change this again, 85 millivolts, and then adjusted V core. It was stable at this, um, pretty much the same score, but a little less, right? Then we ran it one more time uh, with this, and sorry, if it was unstable, there wouldn't be any scores, folks. So then it ended up unstable with this. So no matter what I do, uh, I can't seem to get full on 5.7 performance cores um, if with anything greater than 39 uh, for the performance cores, or excuse me, efficiency cores. So where does that leave us folks? Well, let us head over we got to switch over to the actual computer now maybe i should have started in here to explain this a little bit but um i don't think that's the setting we want right so i'm trying to get this thing back exactly to our best setting And so this needs to go back to here. All right, so start color voltage. Un this is what we're undervolting. We have power limits unlimited. And then these values, folks. Let me just make sure this is exactly what I said. All right. So I didn't try, I haven't tried to increase this at all. Um, and just for the hell of it, let's see, before we, we settle on this 41X for performance being the best. Whoa. So guess what? Um, <laughs> we have new champs, folks. So that is going to be our new... That's going to be our new setting, all right? Never mind this one. This is uh this is the top dog altogether. All right. So now let us go to let's go back in here. And we are going to go over to Cinebench R20 and see if we can kick some butt here, folks. And I'm going to put this up. Now, hopefully this won't affect the score. 
All right, let's hit this thing. Now there's more potential for any of these to be unstable with Cinebench. So if it crashes, we know that it just couldn't hack it. I'd love to break that i9-12900 score on there. Seeing as this is a $300 CPU and that cost me $549, it would be quite interesting. Oh, wow, folks. That is, uh, that's pretty awesome, huh? We're just like right there on the, man. So that is absolutely outstanding. Let's go ahead and close this. We'll bring up R23. And I think with R23, I'm going to see, maybe we'll run the short version of it. If this one has it. Nope, this does not have the... So the Benchmate one, there it is. Okay. Some of you, hope, well, hopefully you guys won't complain about this. Um, we'll run this. This will be, this won't take as long. So there's my highest score that I've ever had with this thing. Um, that may or may not have been an overclocked i5. And we may, we may reach up here today. So let's run this. And so the other version, you know, is kind of testing for thermal throttling. And our temps are showing up lower, so uh, we're probably good there. This thing cranking. You can hear those fans running, I bet, through the microphone. And guess what? We did not show the hardware info information. Oh my God, folks. It beats the i9-12900. Woohoo! All right, so I got to do this one more time for you guys. Um... Man, so good CPU cooler, which I would recommend with either one of these CPUs, but you really need a really good CPU cooler. So we had the Ice Giant Pro Siphon on here, and um, you know, it's somewhere between air and uh, water cooler, right? But not as good as the 280 or the 420 AIO. Uh, Arctic uh, liquid freezer twos that I have, um, but right in that range of Noctua D14 D15. So, wow! So we're gonna run this again, and I am I'm really impressed here. I mean, I'm sure you guys are impressed too, but that was outstanding. All right, so we can see the temps, 90, 91. That's not most likely going to get to 100. Uh-oh. So it didn't get up to 100. And... got an asterisk. I didn't realize the score. Oh wow, the score's even higher. Holy cow. Woo! Alright, so not bad folks. Not bad at all.